In this demonstration, we will explore the ideal gas law and its relation to weather and climate phenomena. We will also try to estimate a physical constant. What we have done is we have blown up a number of balloons and have measured their diameters to get a volume using the caliper in the lower center of the picture. We will put these balloons in a variety of different temperatures from 100 Celsius down to minus 20 Celsius and after 15 minutes we will measure their volumes and take the temperature of the balloon's surface. If you look at the ideal gas law uh, you can see that pressure times volume is proportional to temperature. Now as a parcel of air rises, for instance if it is uh, warmer than the surrounding air, it will rise through that air and as it does it expands. The reason it expands is because as it rises there is less air above it pushing down so the pressure is less. It also cools adiabatically because work is being done at it, on it. In this case the work is that the convection is pushing it up through the atmosphere. Work is being done but energy is not being exchanged between the, the parcel of air and the outside so something has to give. As the pressure decreases as the volume increases, the temperature will decrease because the interaction between the molecules is getting less as you go upward. This is an adiabatic process. But what would happen if you keep the pressure the same and change the temperature? What would happen to the volume? That's what we're going to figure out in this demonstration. After 15 minutes, the balloons were measured for temperature and volume before they were removed from their respective environments. This one was in a 70 degree drying oven. And this one, being measured for its diameter, was in a 37 degree Celsius incubator. You may have seen this before if you have taken physics or chemistry in high school. It's the ideal gas law. P is the air pressure. V is the volume of the gas that you're talking about. N is the number of moles proportional to the number of gas molecules in the balloon. R is the universal gas constant and T is the temperature. Since the number of moles in a balloon remains constant throughout the experiment we can ignore that and cross it off. R is also a constant and it doesn't affect us in this situation so let's get rid of that one too. And we can assume that pressure in the building remains constant throughout the experiment so that has no effect on what we are doing either. Let's get rid of that one. The simplified equation then becomes volume is directly proportional to temperature. Now we can see something interesting. If volume approaches zero, temperature should also approach some minimum value. And we call that minimum value absolute zero. If we divide the volume when it came to final temperature by the volume it was when it was at room temperature, we get a relative volume. If we plot that against the temperature, we get a graph like this. 
the line represents a mathematical relationship between relative volume and temperature and the equation at the top is the representation of that relationship. Basically, if we multiply relative volume by 292.52 and subtract 266.05, we get the temperature. So if we take relative volume down to zero, in other words, if we extrapolate the line down to the y-intercept, that's 292.52 times zero, so it drops out. So y, the temperature, is, is, is a negative 266.05. That is our estimate for absolute zero. The actual absolute zero is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius which is very close to minus 266.05. I think we've done well for estimating absolute zero using a bunch of balloons and a homemade caliper and a, a handheld infrared thermometer.